It's two minutes after one. Ross makes this point. If Schofield lies to his employers, then he's broken a significant part of his workplace rules. But this is an internal issue. Quite how this ends up being discussed in both the houses, House of Commons and Buckingham Palace is beyond me. Well, the, the Prince's Trust um, ambassadorship is there. Uh, Nicky Day says he should have been fired from his job and maybe the ITV network, but this man has now lost his entire career. This is an insanity and takes cancel culture to the next level. I met my husband when I was 18. We'd actually known each other, even though he's much older than me, for many, many years before. There was nothing weird about that, just the way it was. And I think Paul in Fife makes that point and says, should the police investigate that? Well, you'd, you'd be investigating about... 50,000 people who happened to have previously known their partner before they were 16. That would be the problem with that. And that innuendo has only come from social media. It's not come from anywhere else. The fact that somebody begins working somewhere. By the way, it's a horrendous look. And yes, I think the point that Ross makes is that there's a basic rule in the workplace. You know, it is about balance of power and the power dynamic and, you know, the big multi-millionaire presenter exploiting the the new work experience or something of that nature that's the offense as far as we can tell but it's moved into other territory now and itv are going to be questioned about this at a, a select committee next week uh, this is of course something that was already in the diary. Caroline McCall, the chief exec, could appear at a cross-party committee next week, replacing the broadcaster strategy, uh, policy and regulation chief, who was initially expected to discuss the forthcoming media bill. This has taken it to new heights. Uh, two MPs said they planned to question executives about the way ITV dealt with this morning's situation. The this morning situation. Meanwhile, Scoville has been dropped as ambassador for the Prince's Trust, as I mentioned. Is ITV telling us the truth here? Tim Luckhurst, principal of South College, Durham University, former BBC executive, uh, always helps us out on these kind of issues. Tim, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to you, Ed. It's a heck of a mess, this one, isn't it? And so often in these kind of cases, it's not always the initial story that becomes the problem, it's the potential cover-up of a story that ends up exploding and becoming the bigger story, as it were. Yeah, that's right. That's the only thing it's got in common with Watergate. After all, all of this is really just malicious tittle-tattle, gossip and lovies behaving badly. But if ITV knew about it, and if ITV could have done something about it, and if ITV decided that it was better in its commercial interest to do nothing, to ignore it, to turn a blind eye, then that is going to be the one that's really going to cause Carolyn McCall difficulties. And as you say, she may well be asked about that by the Select Committee on Culture, Media and Sport on Monday and I think that will be a very difficult question to answer not least because ITV's share price is currently paying a bit of a price for this it's down 20% now let's be fair it's been trending low over the last year but it is down and this is not doing any favors at all to ITV's commercial interests in, in, indeed and it, it, it would seem I mean, there's a lot, as you rightly say, Tim, there's a lot of tittle-tattle in this, a lot of innuendo, social media doing what it does best, which is just sort of make stuff up and off it runs, it gets shared, it gets retweeted, and um, it, it's not a pretty sight to look at some of those headlines. Um, however, the overarching story here is, of course, that we do know is that Schofield would have broken the, the basic rules of the workplace in terms of the power dynamic thing. How often did this morning sit on the sofa and discuss that the issues with Me Too and what was going on in Hollywood? And there, it appears, was one of their own in a, a very similar situation. So that bit isn't uh, innuendo. We know that is true. The question is whether the bosses knew it's true. Now, the difficulty there is that everybody else seemed to know it was true and was happening, apart from this top tier of management. I mean, to many people, that would be unthinkable. Well, yes, it would be unthinkable, but it wouldn't be unprecedented in show business. After all, you've got a very valuable asset in Philip Schofield. He's popular with the audience. The lineup was working very well for them. Would it have been easy for a senior executive at ITV who didn't want to know to say, look, we've investigated, there's no hard evidence? I think it would have been fairly straightforward. And I suspect that that's where the difficulty comes in. Because although the behaviour of all those involved conveys the very powerful impression that they knew that Philip Schofield was having a relationship with this younger man for quite a long time. And although we know that the young man has received a compensation payment of some kind, and we think that's come from Philip Schofield, not from ITV, that's an interesting question, by the way, all of this is above 
is entirely legal. It's simply a little bit tasteless. Mm. But if people knew and they turned a blind eye, then they're going to get into trouble for having turned a blind eye. That's what this comes down to, Ian. It really is an enormously trivial issue, which has been turned into one which can do real damage yeah. by virtue of the fact that it appears to have been a cover-up by senior executives. Yeah, we'll that, that, it's that, isn't it? I mean, would you, you know, would you step down if you were Caroline McCall in this uh, kind of situation, Tim? You know what it's like on the top tier of management in the world of media? Well, I'd either have a very good explanation that I really had conducted a detailed investigation and that witnesses had consciously and deliberately lied to me, in which case, no, I certainly wouldn't resign. Or I would know in my heart of hearts that, in fact, it had been pretty clear what was going on. People were trying to pull the wool over my eyes and I'd chosen to allow them to do so, in which case I'd think I hadn't got a leg to stand on. I don't know which of those true two scenarios is the case. One or other of them is going to be fairly close to the truth, and that's what MPs and others who are going to interrogate ITV senior, manager, senior managers, including, I suspect, mm. some senior shareholders, will really want to know. Did they really know, or did they decide they wanted not to know? Yeah. Uh, many people make sort of comparisons that, you know, McCall wasn't uh, backwards in coming forwards when it came to Piers Morgan being told, there's the door, um, uh, and yet this was also going on at the same time. The, the moral high ground position that she appeared to, the hashtag be kind thing, um, appears potentially to have gone out the window on this one, though. Well, she's, I mean, she's a very experienced chief executive. She's been chief executive of The Guardian, EasyJet, and now ITV. It's not as if she hasn't come across difficult ones in the past. Trust. So she's got good judgment, or at least she has demonstrated good judgment in the past. So I'm not prepared to say that she's got this spectacularly wrong until the evidence confirms that. But if this was drawn to the attention of senior management and they chose to turn a blind eye, that's going to be a serious error. Tim, thank you. Tim Luckhurst is a principal of South College, Durham University. Uh, he is himself, of course, a former BBC executive. I don't, I, I can't think for the life of me, how, for, for there's many reasons to this, Again, you have to kind of divorce all the innuendo. You can, people have their own ideas about that, usually based on nothing. Let's be honest, there's a lot of people listening to this going, oh, I think this went on, or I think he knew this person then, and blah, blah, blah. But nobody actually knows that. That's, you, that's a decision you take to believe that based on nothing at all. You might say, well, based on probability. Well, it's as probable as it is improbable in, in the world of not knowing. There's, there's just not a cat in hell's chance anybody could prove that point. Unless, of course, you know, other evidence then comes forward. Um, the guy himself comes forward and at some point I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to maybe hear something from that person. I don't know. It, it, it's hard to tell. What we can deal with, though, are the hard facts. And the hard facts are there will be powerful people at ITV at this morning that absolutely knew this was going on. Um, it was, it's an internal issue, OK? It's the balance of power thing. Um, Holly would have sat there next to Phil for all of those uh, years, knowing that this guy had whether it was directly or indirectly, but utilised his power as a very powerful, famous, rich presenter to bag himself a lover. Now, the argument there even, some will go, well, hang on a second, no, we actually liked each other. Big old age gap, yeah, sorry, crime alert, we liked each other. That will be what, as long as both of them say that, then there's nothing anyone can do to prove otherwise. But you just don't do it. And you don't, you would have, it's, it sounds like something from the 1970s, doesn't it? All the, you think of all the cases we've discussed about people exploiting their, their position and their seniority, and in cases such as this, their fame, etc. And you see, even tacitly, it's just kind of there underlying, oh, I can make things happen for you, you know, I can get you a job, etc. Blah, blah, blah. So, that in itself is a terrible thing for Schofield in the 21st century, when he and the people on his programme would have discussed endlessly uh, what was going on in other areas of the media when it came to exploitation from very powerful, famous people. So he can't get... On that basis alone, I, he was stuffed and had to go. But, frankly, if he had to go, what is even more tasteless and unforgivable are the bosses that watched it happening. And nobody with a straight face. If I could have discussed this with mates in the industry two or three years ago, if I knew that, are you telling me that all that Holly did? I knew it, but Holly didn't. Really? That's a bit weird, isn't it? Wouldn't that be weird? I know neither Holly or Phil.
but I knew something about him that she didn't? That's just mad. You might argue that that's impossible, I think. And it's not just her, of course. There's the editor of the programme, there's the senior producers. You have to have some sympathy with people who are lower down the, the, the kind of pecking order in some respects, because, you know, what are they supposed to do? Is They're not in a position to say anything. I'm not absolutely sure either that all these people claiming, you know, I told ITV bosses... I think most of the people didn't like Phil. I mean, I love Eamon Holmes. I, Eamon, formerly of this parish, and he is one of the most delightful men I've ever met. I think the biggest issue that I, I took from Eamon's interview was that he really just didn't like the bloke. And he's certainly not the first person to say that. Now, register in that you don't like someone. Register in that you're, you feel the culture where you work isn't as it should be is a very different thing to register in that I think something even more worrying is taking place. And there's a distinguishing line in all of these kind of strange areas.